smash like. that like button. Smash that like button! Mm. I'm just yeah. gonna stare at this camera. Hey guys, welcome to Cutting Quarters with Jim and Jake. And Jake, uh, special guest today is our CTO, Jacob Graham. Uh, we've been working together for almost 18 years now. Yeah. My phone's ringing. Um, but, oh, rookie move. Oh, I answered it too. Okay, anyway. Uh, brought in Jacob Graham to talk about some more of our uh, uh, software heavy features. Number one is Parts Builder. Parts Builder is our lightweight CAD system that you can use to make parts, whether you have access to CAD or not. Yeah, it's a free CAD that we offer that has a bunch of customizable templates that are already there. Um, and Graham and his team are the ones that developed it all in-house, right? So yeah. um, what better person to talk about it with than Jake himself? Yeah, um, first of all, like, what's it good for? Like, why did we, why did we build this web-based CAD uh, instead of you know someone using Fusion or SolidWorks or something like that. Uh, there's a couple reasons. It was it, there's we built it for both the, our uh, customers that are not as familiar with CAD. We also built it for our customers that are extremely familiar with CAD. Um, and what I mean by that is there's there's a number of parts that you will find that you want to develop or make that um, you just don't feel like firing up CAD to do. And these would be like uh, simple things like roll cage tabs, uh, we've got brackets, flanges, uh, things that are a little bit more complicated like um, gears and trigger wheels and yep. all that. And so I find myself a number, you know, on a number of projects where I will, I'll think of something and be like, well, that's just a washer. I don't really want to fire up, you know, Fusion or SolidWorks in order to draw it. So I just kind of pop in, you know, to Parts Builder. I use it all the time. Uh, for little things. I actually use it on my phone a ton too. Yeah. yeah, I think that's actually important is that the, you know, everybody that made these custom templates, we all have our own projects at home, whether they're cars or like hand radios or anything like that, right? Yeah. And so they're common parts that are kind of used in design, whether they're a patch panel, circle patterns, you know, gussets are in there. Um, it's gonna be a lot of standard designs that you see in yeah. normal builds. Uh, washers, yeah. washers is one that we were talking about where all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, sometimes I'm just halfway through a project and I need a couple quick washers. I fire up Part Builder. Yep. Parts Builder? Part, parts part, Builder. Whatever. I don't know. Part, it says it Part Builder many, sometimes. <laughs> it depends on how many parts you're wanting to make. Oh, good point. Right? Okay. If it's a single yeah. part, a part, builder, part Builder or Parts Builder. Yeah. It depends on what you want to do. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's easy enough for someone who's never used CAD, but it's also convenient enough for someone who's a CAD expert, you know, which I would exactly. classify these guys as, and we still use it all the time. Yeah. Um, let's dive into some tics, tips and tricks uh, about Parts Builder, because on the surface, it just looks like some customizable templates, but really uh, you can do a lot more than, than you expect when you look at it. I think one of my favorite parts though is that on the surface, it's very simple, right? So you can get uh, essentially a shape, like a rectangle, you can have holes, and there's easy drag and drops where you can type in the exact dimensions and stuff that you want. So before you even get into the tips and tricks, it's very, very simple. We can actually cut to some, probably some B-roll now. Oh, it's been, the B-roll has the already been, been going. It's okay. been going for quite it's some time. It's been rolling the entire time. But you know, it's, it's very simple. You can start <laughs> with a basic shape or you can actually yeah. have preset, you know, patch panels like this one right here. That's a rectangle, radiuses, holes, the whole diameters. Those are all customizable. And this is a part that we made right off of Parts Builder. Um, but yeah, let's go into tips and tricks. Like what's some cool things that you can do with Parts Builder that people might not know? Yeah. Well, one of the big features of Parts Builder, and it may not seem like a feature out of the gate, is that we don't constrain, other than like overall max dimensions, we don't constrain any of the settings. So you can create very interesting parts, you know, with it. And what I mean by that is you can, you can invert a part. Yeah, sure. So if we go down over here to the part builder, I'll kind of demonstrate this. Uh, this is where we take, say I wanted to have a, I wanted to have a flange like this, and but I want it to be square on the inside. Well, we don't have a part template in the parts builder that would have that, or do we? Oh, yeah. we do. So if you click the if you click the part that has a outer shape of a square, let's edit this. What happens if we increase the inside hole diameter to be larger than the entire part? 
it inverts itself. And so then That's now amazing. we move these guys, move the holes out, and now you have a nice flange with a you know square inside, yeah. Yeah. which then you can customize further. Um, Honestly, I didn't even know that until we started talking about <laughs> part, parts builder and uh, I, it kind of blew my mind. It's, it's kind oh. of unintended <laughs> consequences, yeah. I guess. Um, yeah. When we were in development of Parts Builder, we're like, okay, should we constrain it so that we're always doing DFM on the fly and making sure that it, you can't design yourself into some you know, unmanufacturable situation? But then we realized it's actually better to give you guys the freedom yeah. to experiment and play with it uh, because you can actually make more templates than we could dream of. You know, the, right. We had a discussion the other day about, hey, should we add a thousand Parts Builder templates? Right. And the reality is that with 10 templates, we actually have a thousand because they're so customizable. Exactly. There's so much you can into, you can do with it, and we we don't want to lock customers into um, designing things the way that we want. You know, within the parts builder, where things are overly constrained, or where if I increase the size of this circle, then it's it's blocked by the outer diameter, yeah. and now I got to make this guy bigger, and that, you know that sort of thing. And so it's it is wide open. Just mess um, with it just you can play with it and it's it is interesting to see the sort of interesting parts that you probably wouldn't have normally known that you can create yeah we're you actually definitely create very surprised that. sometimes <laughs> it will be like oh that was made on parts builder uh, you know people are, are either very clever or lucky or both uh, but it's, yep. it's kind of a yeah. cool tool so play with it that being said you can get yourself into something that's unmanufacturable you could you can do some pretty weird stuff in there and as you play with it you'll you'll see what i mean um, but just use common sense. And if you know your material that you're working with beforehand, right. uh, yeah. check our guidelines, which we're gonna get into in yeah. a little bit. So uh, talking about that, like we can add some complexity and stuff to the designs. So but we can add bending in here. Uh, maybe Jake, you wanna talk about I how we can add bend the lines? Bending. Yes. And so for this exact part here, which yeah. starts off as a, as a rectangle, right? With a couple holes here and a couple bends. So we start with the first template in Parts Builder, which is our rectangular plate. So we'll just keep it at its defaults here, but let's go yeah. ahead and add a bend. So we can click over on the tab of bend lines. And the bend lines we drop in in random positions so that they're all visible. So and you we have can, them color coded, right? We so have you can them color coded, you can see which one is which. And then this is where, let's say, let's make this one one inch in and this is a six inch part, let's make this one five inches in. And so now we can go save and continue. Yeah, so you essentially added in the bend lines yes. in which you can determine where the fold is. Now that you yep. added in, you start selecting material, you have to select a material that can be bent, right? Yes. So we're not gonna be able to select acrylic or something. More, sorry, delivery. More and more material getting delivered. But so All yeah, right. once we select that material, it allows for bending, you can add that in your service area, right? Exactly, so the rest of the process is exactly the same as what we do, uh, you know, what you experience when you're uploading a part in general. Um, but now you've done this completely within the app, you didn't have to fire up your CAD program. And in order to continue building this part, that looks like it's around 60 thousandths. So let's just pick a 60 thousandths material and add our bending. And so right here, you can see we added those two flanges and then yep. you can continue the rest of the checkout and you have that exact part and you didn't have to, didn't have to uh, bring up your CAD program. Uh, you didn't have to you know, export it, import it into the, you know, our platform. Yeah. And yeah. so it's kind of a, I've always used this thing uh, very much kind of a on the go. I'll get an idea in my head and it's something simple. I need a little bracket or flange yeah. or whatever. I've used it literally under my car before. Yeah. Uh, I've been like, oh crap, how, you know, measure how big that transmission bracket needs yeah. to be and then type it into my phone and right. see if it's gonna work, you know, yeah. order it, a couple days later it shows yep. up. Exactly. Yeah, L bracket with like two holes in it, right? Yep. Yeah, Ex extremely um, common, yeah. It's super easy. Uh, I think uh, the other thing we want to talk about is how you can assign, you know, hole operations yeah. too, or second ops. Actually, we can, this is a great we part. We can just continue right on here. with yeah. this exact part here. And so we have holes right on the flanges here. Um, so let's go back here and let's take it back and we will go to, let's do some hardware insertion. So these, all these holes are 250 thousandths diameter. That's what we had chosen in the part builder and that's what ends up in the app right here. Yep. So we will open up the catalog and let's do a, let's just make something 
It's at a 440 stud, at, like say like a half inch. Watching you do this is very like Bob Ross. It's very like, let's just add <laughs> yeah. a happy little trader. Yeah. Let's, so let's this, is a, this is a half inch 440 stud that's been inserted. And one of the things I uh, wanted to point out is I didn't need to know what diameter those holes needed to be in order to insert the hardware. That's another feature of our platform is we automatically correct all the hold sizes to the whole operation that you're choosing. So if one of the techniques that I usually do is I just spot the holes. And by spotting the holes, it means I will generally just say all the holes are 100 thousandths or this category of holes are 100 thousandths. And so um, because the app automatically will adjust the hole sizes, it doesn't really matter. So if I want to put a half inch, you know, if I want to tap a half inch uh, diameter uh, hole there, it, um, it'll automatically handle it. You don't need it. to know drill size no. or yep. you know, any of that. Like, so when I, I put quarter 20 hardware in a lot of my stuff, um, I do the same as you. I just yeah. put a random size hole and I'm just like quarter 20 everywhere, yeah. three eighths or whatever I need. So yeah, super fast. I'll add a, one little tip to that yeah. is what I like to do is group the d hole sizes depending on the, the secondary operation that I'm going to do. So if I know that these are going to be nuts and these are going to be tapped holes, I make them two different size holes. It makes them easier to select them in right. here yep. because they're already going to be grouped underneath that hole diameter. Yeah, that's a really good tip. Yeah, I'm going to start using that. <laughs> uh, sh show us the uh, removing holes the cheat remove code. The removing holes too. cheat code. Um, one of the things to be aware of is that any of the holes that exist or the whole groups that exist within the um, apart can be removed. So I'll give you an example here. We have a, we have this part right here. There's no center hole, but let's say I started with a template that did have a center hole on it. So we will go right over here. Let's try this again. Oh, show all. So we're going to go to a part here that has a center hole. And we're just gonna set the inner hole diameter to zero. And then when you set it to zero, it now makes it exactly the same as the other part. Yeah. Um, and this, there's other templates in there that have multiple categories of hole groups and the, yeah. you can zero them out if you just don't want the hole. A lot of our templates are the same template, but just different starting points. Exactly. Yep. So it's, we're kind of cheating. We're like, here's one with a hole, without a hole. Yep. It's the same thing. We just turn it on and off. So yeah. play with it. Yep. Um, let's talk about, oh, some, some more secrets, gears, decorative, and like timing wheels. We have some funny categories in there for templates yeah. that a lot of people don't realize. Um, we're doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you, especially on gears. Gears, trigger wheels, those are complicated unless you're running some sort of a macro or a yeah. uh, wizard in order to draw them up because um, you have to deal with, you know, pitch and other, you know, tooth geometry. And so we've put these into the app. Um, you know, there's been requests for uh, like say trigger wheels. You know, if you want to make a 60-1 trigger, uh, trigger wheel or a 36-2 um, trigger wheel, you can do it all in the app. You can choose yeah. the number of missing teeth. You can choose the total number of teeth. You can define how you want the, the hub to look like and um, what the, you know, all the different diameters. So, yeah. and it makes it as easy as anything else in our, in our um, part builder and that you can just kind of run through the parameters, you tweak it, and you're good. And this goes along the same with all the gears. Um, we have a couple good starting points for gears, and um, from those, you can build a whole, you could probably build a little transmission, I'm sure, Absolutely. if you wanted to. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you have, a key, you have a key in there as well. Yeah. Uh, what I always like about this is that you can see different sections within the parts builder. So you have a gear section, so in that gear section, you're gonna be using you know the teeth pitch, the count, yeah. and stuff of your, of yep. those and then on the inner hole uh, the inner hole has you know the key set dimension and that inner diameter yes. um, so i always liked how it kind of broke it down keeps it simple you can yep. kind of take one thing at a time one caveat that i would like to mention though about gears is because we are laser cutting gears the thicker the material yep. um, there will be striations there it's not going to be a perfect machined edge uh, because laser cutting is amazing but it's not as perfect as you know, what do you call it? Hobbing a gear, like right? Machined, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, well, you can clean so, it up. Yeah, for thin materials, it usually works great. Uh, actually, for some of our non metals, like if we run it on router, if you have the right pitch, yeah. uh, we've actually, for some Discovery Museums or whatever, yeah. we've had like these yeah. big yeah. UHMW yeah. gears and stuff. I actually made a whole Halloween setup that had like this witch stirring a cauldron thing. <laughs> 
that I made it out of plywood. Oh, through yeah. us, uh, out yeah. of the parts builder, and it just made some gear things that kind of went you together. Go. If you <laughs> so, do fine yeah, pitch. Super nerd, right? <laughs> yeah. Super nerd, yeah. If, if you do fine pitch on like half inch thick mild steel, yeah. Uh, it's And you're like, how come they don't mesh up perfectly? Just just be warned that you, you may run right. into an issue. It goes issue. back to tolerances. And actually, I think that brings us to checking the guidelines, right? Yeah. So all of this stuff is still not a void of the guidelines and stuff that we have on our website. So when it comes down to bending and how close you can have a bend line to other features, that's still going to be taken in consideration when it comes down yeah. to like making your guys' parts. Um, so read the guidelines, understand the material and stuff before you go into Parts Builder, and you're going to be set up for more success as you make those parts. Yeah, Parts Builder will let you do anything you want. So if you start getting holes right out to the very, very edge and they're non-manufacturable, yeah. um, you'll learn that later on, but not during <laughs> the design process. Uh, let's talk about something else maybe that's challenging it's possible yeah. with parts builder but like assemblies yeah i think you just touched on it with even gears right so if you have yeah. two gears that are going to interlock knowing tolerances and stuff that's when parts builder is capable of doing it but yeah. it's going to be a little bit harder you're going to have to plan for things a little bit more i mean and simple so, assemblies you yeah know, obviously it's it's no problem yeah, that's a great that's a great example i, I didn't even know that was going to work i know that's just lucky just uh, i think that might actually work too does it does it fit oh, oh look at that, oh, look at that. okay yeah uh so anyway Sometimes yes, you, get you lucky. could do you could do a stack up uh, if you're clever with your bending and you understand uh, you know maybe use our bending calculator and you understand flange right. length and everything like that. You can do some assemblies, but don't try and design uh, yeah. like a rocket ship only with parts builder. Actually, right. go ahead. I don't. Please do. Go nuts. I would love I, I, to. I would actually sponsor <laughs> that. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Challenge. It is not a drawback. Yeah. Um, it's not a drawback, but it again. Just be aware. With the guidelines, be aware know our tolerances and stuff, and then you know, you'll be set up for success again. Yeah. Uh, alternatives. So if, you know, we've talked about some of the limitations of Parts Builder. If you have something that's very complex uh, and Parts Builder can't handle it, like what should we use instead? I mean, I personally use, you know, Fusion 360, SolidWorks. Yep. Um, you know, those softwares yep. are gonna be the ones that you can do advanced designs, build a rocket or a car right. and stuff with. Um, and that's what Ron I tend shape, to do. NX. But like Jake alluded to earlier and stuff, when I'm doing a washer or a patch panel, it's actually fast for me, for me just to go to Sunset oh, website yeah. and do it through the parts builder. And I yeah. do that all the time as well. So totally. Uh, Fusion 360 is great. They have a free option that's free for hobbyists. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just upload a step to our website. We'll handle it no problem. SolidWorks yep. now has a maker version. I think it's yeah. it's very inexpensive, it's like ten dollars a month or something very similar. Also, if you're a student, uh, almost every you know, college or university is going to have a deal with SolidWorks. Yeah. yeah. So if you're a student, get that student discount. It's usually even free. Uh, another option that we have, let's say you just you just need a part to finish your project, um, but it's a little more advanced from the CAD perspective. We do have our design services. Yeah. So that's when you can tap into our engineering talent under this roof. Uh, send us either a cardboard template or send us a napkin sketch that's dimensioned or whatever. Our engineers will put it together, show you a proof. Uh, it's a nominal fee. I don't know what the fee is. It's inexpensive. Yeah. Um, it's affordable. And yeah, affordable. affordable. Yeah. They'll go back and forth with you to refine it, uh, and then we'll manufacture it. It'll meet all our specs. So kind of a cool service that we're ramping up here as well. It also has the same kind of basic lead time that we have for all of our parts, <laughs> right? So Jeez. it's not a two week. <laughs> Bless you. It's not a two, it's not a two week, <laughs> three week type ordeal and stuff. You'll end up getting that reversal really quick. You're gonna be in constant communication and stuff with our design guys. Yeah. Um, and then the beauty is, is that they'll be able to teach you a lot of this stuff. And as you kind of get into the realm of using our parts builder or even Fusion 360, essentially we can teach you how to fish a little bit, well, right? And you know what's awesome about design services plus parts builder is there's been times when people have requested design service and we're like, you can just build that in parts builder, dude. Yeah. And so we yeah. just send them a link and it's free, you know? Yeah. Uh, anyway, like, subscribe, smash. The buttons. Smash the buttons. We've been Smash watching it. YouTube and it's, apparently everyone says that, so yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that it? Uh, I think that's okay. good. Okay. Love Thanks. You. Love Bye. you. Bye.